2 Kings chapter number 3. Before I read the text, let me set the table what is transpiring. Uh, we find in 2 Kings the kingdom of Israel is divided. We find that sorry, no good Jezebel and Ahab, who had Ahab been king over Israel, they have uh, passed on, or Ahab has passed on, and um, his son Jehoram has become the king of Israel. Now, he has done wickedly in the sight of God. He's not as evil as his father was, but he has done wickedly in the sight of God. And Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah. And Moab has now risen up against Israel, and Moab is going to fight against Israel. Now, you know Moab is always a picture of the type of the flesh. My dear friends, I don't care how old you get, you're always going to have a battle with the flesh. You can put it under subjection and you can pray and seek God's face and be in the Word and walk with the Lord and walk in the Spirit. Uh, but uh, if you're not careful, that old flesh will rise up on you. And uh, we find that that is what is transpiring in chapter number 3. Also, if you're a student of the Bible, you know in chapter 2 that the great prophet Elijah has been blessed to go to heaven in a whirlwind of, uh, a whirlwind of fire and chariots of fire and horses of fire and the man of God Elisha is left and Elisha takes up the mantle of Elijah and his ministry is just beginning. So with all that in mind, let's begin reading in verse number 10. The Bible says, And the king of Israel said, Alas, that the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Je Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Eden went down to him. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father and the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I, had that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the goodness of God. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing we have enjoyed, the good testimonies that were spoken. We do pray for Miss Lisa's sister, that, Lord, she'd get back in church. Lord, I know how the devil works, and I know that once people get out, it's easy to get out, but it's hard to get back in. And so, God, I pray that, Lord, uh, she'd come to herself like that prodigal son in the hog pen. She may not be in the hog pen of sin, but I pray she'd co start coming back that road she left on, and she'd get back to the Father's house. I pray for them two children. Lord, they'd be raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now, Father, I do pray that, Lord, for the next few minutes, you'd arrest our hearts and arrest our attention. I pray you'd speak to us. I pray that, Lord, you'd edify the body of Christ. I pray you'd illuminate our minds to thy truth. I pray you'd charge us and challenge us uh, and even convict us to stand uh, against the wiles of the devil even in this evil day. Father, I do pray for those that are working with our young people. Uh, I pray you'd bless their efforts. I pray for those young people. Thank you for them. Lord, thank you for what they mean to our church. Uh, and God, I pray that you'd help them and bless them. I'm thankful they got to go to a, a, a little camp meeting this weekend, and I'm glad you helped them. And God, I pray that, Lord, you would certainly put a hedge about them. And I pray for any of those young people that aren't saved, that, Lord, they'll get saved before it's everlasting too late. Uh, Father, I pray for every need of every heart. 
here in the sanctuary tonight. If there's anybody unsaved, I pray they'd get born again. I pray for the saved folks that you'd revive them. God, you'd do something in their heart uh, that'd be supernatural and have everlasting consequences. Uh, bless now, use this unworthy vessel. Help us tonight. We'll bless you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. We ask these things. Uh, amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to the text and bring out some things. Uh, uh, look at the reliance, if you will, uh, in verse number 10. Uh, and the king of Israel said, Alas, uh, the Lord hath called these three kings together. Uh, we find here that uh, the king of Israel had reached out to the king of Eden, and he'd reached out to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, said, Moab's come up against us. Uh, Will you come together with us and fight with us to destroy Moab? Uh, and Jehoshaphat uh, uh, remarked that uh, Israel, they're our brethren, certainly will be there and help you. And the king of Edom came as well. Uh, and the king of Israel is rejoicing and relying uh, on the fact there are numbers with them uh, and there are three different kingdoms that have come together. Uh, uh, that's a blessing, but can I say uh, uh, little's much when God is in it. Uh, you better not base things on your intellect. Uh, you better not rely on things that you can count on. Uh, you better learn to count on Almighty God. Uh, he's still well able to do exceeding abundantly uh, above all that we ask or think. Uh, and we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Uh, uh, friend, uh, David got in trouble when he numbered the people. Uh, and you better not put your faith in numbers. Uh, you better put your faith in the hand of God. Uh, we see the reliance of the king of Israel he is on the crowd. He's got to fight with him. Notice, if you will, uh, the rational one. Look what happens in verse number 11. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? Notice this guy's got some sense. He said, I don't care who's got sword and spear. I care whether or not the Lord's in this thing. Uh, he says, is there not a prophet around here uh, that can get a hold of the Lord and inquire of the Lord uh, whether or not uh, the Lord is with us? Uh, friend, you better have the Lord with you no matter what you face, whether it's your flesh, whether it's the devil, or whether it's the world. If you don't have the Lord, you're going to be in trouble. huh? And by the way, you better know that before you go into battle. Uh, Jehoshaphat didn't wait till uh, swords were flying to find out if the Lord was with them. He wanted to know ahead of time. Hmm? So we see the rash, uh, reliance. We see the rational. Now, notice the reputation. Look again at verse number 11. Mm, Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord by him uh, 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 that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king's servants, is, of Israel's servants, answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured on, uh, water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Eden went down to him. Now notice the reputation. Elisha has not been the prophet very long. Elisha, if you remember, uh, was out plowing the field with the team of oxen, uh, and the man of God comes by Elijah, cast his mantle on him. God called Elisha, uh, and Elisha then served the man of God. Uh, and even when the 50 sons of the prophets stood afar, uh, it was Elisha that went with Elisha down to Bethel, uh, down to Jordan. Uh, uh, and well, it was Elisha that was there uh, uh, when the Lord uh, took Elijah away. Uh, and here's Elisha just starting out. But know his reputation. As soon as they asked for a prophet, one of the servants of the king of Israel said, Hey, Elisha's here. And he poured water on Elijah's hand. Now that struck fear in the heart of the king of Israel. Because it was Elijah that prayed down fire on Mount Carmel. Uh, it was Elijah that destroyed uh, uh, the prophets of Baal, the prophets of the grove, which his father sought uh, answers from. Uh, but Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, he said, The Lord is with him. Hmm? Uh, what a reputation. And that ought to be a reputation we all seek. Right. That folks know the Lord is with us. 
Folks on the job, when they have troubles, they seek you out to pray for them. Uh, folks, when they're uh, uh, what makes sense of what's going on in the world, uh, they seek you out for answers uh, because they know the Lord is with you. Huh? Amen. We see the reputation. Now notice, if you will, the lack of respect. Look at verse 13. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What do I, what do I have to do with thee? He said, Get thee to the prophets of thy father and the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, surely were it not that I had regard in the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. Elisha said to him, said to the king of Israel, he said, why don't you go uh, seek the prophets of your father, the prophets of what do I have to do with you? Uh, he said, you're not interested in God. You've never been interested in God. You're not interested in the things of God. Why are you down here to see me now? He said, if it wasn't for Jehoshaphat, I wouldn't even see you today. Uh, uh, listen, it amazes me uh, how people will run the man of God down, uh, how people will would have nothing to do but complain about the man of God. Uh, uh, but as soon as they get sick, they want the man of God to show up uh, and to do, uh, work some kind of miracle. I got news for you. Uh, the man of God has no miracles, but he serves the God of miracles. Uh, uh, but you better watch it. Uh, uh, it's uh, still a sin to touch God's anointed, uh, and it's still a sin to have no respect for the things of God. Uh, he says, what do I have to do with you? Huh? said, I wouldn't even see you. I'll never forget. This just came to mind. We had a guy one time years ago just told me I was doing things wrong around here. See, he'd got to reading on the Internet about some guy, and he said, this guy on the Internet, he's got, he's got all the answers. He said, you're wrong. So, uh, you know what I told him? I said, next time you're in the hospital, call that guy on the Internet. I did. I said, the next time you're troubled uh, and you need answers, uh, call the man on the Internet. Uh, next time uh, uh, you need somebody to come by your house and help you because I'd done that, uh, I said, call the man on the Internet. Uh, 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 it's easy uh, 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 to get caught up in what somebody far away says, uh, but you ought to be thankful there are people God's put in your life that'll be there for you, that'll show you the ways of God. Hmm. Uh, we just see Elisha had a lack of respect for that fellow because he hadn't earned any respect. But notice, if you will, the regard. Look again in verse number 14. Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. Notice the regard the man of God had for the king of Judah. He said, if it wasn't for the regard I have for the presence of Jehoshaphat, I wouldn't even see you. You had regard for that king because that king loved God. That king's over Judah. Judah's always a picture of the praise of the Lord. That fellow praised the Lord. That fellow's the one that wanted to inquire of the Lord. Uh, and we find that the man of God had respect for him, had regard for him. I'm interested tonight in a phrase in verse number 14. Again, the Bible says, And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts live it, before whom I stand, surely, here's the phrase I'm in, interested in, Were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaph Jehoshaphat. I'm going to preach with God's help on that thought tonight. Were it not. Were it not. Can I say, were it not for Christ, we'd be lost tonight. Uh, uh, were it not for the darling Son of God who left heaven uh, and came and bled and died and made a way for sinners to be saved, uh, we'd be on our way to hell or already in hell tonight. Uh, I'm glad tonight to say uh, I'm not lost. I'm saved by the grace of God, uh, not because of works of righteousness which I have done, uh, but because of the works He done, uh, the finished works of Calvary. Uh, hey, for by grace are you saved through faith, uh, not, not of yourselves. 
uh, it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast uh, I'm not earning my way to heaven uh, I'm not working my way to heaven uh, I'm not climbing up the rough side of the mountain to heaven uh, by faith some 50 years ago uh, I called on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, repented of my sins uh, and he saved me uh, sealed me with the Holy Spirit of promise uh, he put me on this path called straight uh, he's walked every mile with me uh, he's been a friend that's sticking closer than a brother uh, hey what a blessing to be saved tonight uh, were it not for Christ uh, I'd be lost uh, but I'm not lost uh, I'm glad I got found uh, I'm glad he saved me and changed me therefore if any man be in Christ uh, he's a new creature uh, old things passed away behold all things become new uh, what happened to you uh, Jesus is what happened uh, I'm glad he drank his bitter cup I'm glad he endured the death of the cross uh, and I'm glad he doomed hell in the grave when he conquered them on resurrection morning uh, hey what a blessing to know the Lord uh, and the free pardon of sins uh, I don't have to worry about going to heaven that got settled a long time ago uh, my name was recorded in the Lamb's book of life and I'm glad God don't have an eraser. The Bible said, Jesus said uh, uh, that I'm in his hands, uh, his hands in the Father's hands, uh, and no man can pluck me out of the Father's hand. Uh, I've got news for you. I'm a man. Even if I tried to jump out, I couldn't jump out. Uh, because I'm in his hands uh, I'm engraved in the palm of his hand Isaiah said uh, what a blessing to be saved by the good grace of God I'm glad the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin all my past sins all my present sins all sins I will ever commit uh, were washed away in the blood of Jesus Christ uh, were it not for Christ I'd be lost can I say tonight were it not for the canon of scripture I'd be ignorant. Mm. Uh, you know, through the Word of God, we know that God framed the heavens. Uh, through the Word of God, we have the gospel. Through the Word of God, we uh, had the law which brought conviction to our soul for where there is no schoolmaster with the law, uh, 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 there was no sin. Uh, but when the law came, it brought us to the knowledge of sin. Uh, but Jesus Christ came full of grace and truth uh, and made a way for you and I to be saved. How do we know? Because we have God's Word. Uh, too many people base their faith on their feelings. Uh, listen, there are feelings associated with being saved. Uh, I'm glad I feel good knowing I'm saved. Uh, but I've got news for you. There are days when you're sick in your body that doesn't change the fact whether or not you're saved. Your feelings and emotions change. But hey, I'm glad what God did is forever settled. Isn't that a blessing? And he gave us a word that's forever settled in heaven. They've tried to change it, and they continually try to change it. Uh, uh, every time I find myself in a Christian bookstore, I find a new version out. Uh, I don't need a new version. God said what he meant, meant what he said. Uh, I'm glad God gave us a book we can depend on. Uh, hey, what a blessing to know uh, the good things of God. Uh, Listen, if God can set the sun uh, where he set it and spin the earth on its axis and orbit it around the sun, uh, and if God can tell the sun when to shine, uh, when God can tell the stars when to sparkle and he flung them out there on nothing and called them by name, uh, if God can paint every pretty sunset, uh, if God, uh, hey, goes to every funeral that a sparrow that falls from the ground uh, uh, has, if God can do all of that, surely he can give us a word that we can trust in. Uh, if it wasn't for the scriptures we'd be ignorant and can I say there are some that have the scriptures and choose to be ignorant you know the Bible says study to show thyself approved unto God a uh, workman that needed not to be ashamed you know we're to rightly divide the word of truth Amen. There are a lot of people don't understand how to study your Bible reading your Bible is not studying it we are to read our Bible but we're also to study it what does studying mean? Well, in order to study your Bible, you've got to find the context of what's going on. In order to find the context, you usually got to read the chapter before the chapter of what you're reading and the chapter afterwards. That'll tell you who God's talking to and what context. Uh, in order for it to be doctrine, you got to find the same uh, 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 statements written to the same people in the same context at least two or three times. Then you got a doctrine. 
We've got over 300 different denominations and religions in America today, and the reason being is they don't know how to study God's Word. We've got a whole denomination that will take one verse out of context and build a whole doctrine on one verse. Can I say, what a blessing to have the canon of Scripture and have the ability to rightly divide it. You know there are lame brains that say you should never read from the Old Testament because that was Old Testament. We live in the New Testament. Without the Old Testament, New Testament wouldn't make sense. Can I say, God didn't have to repeat everything again in the New Testament because a lot of things He wrote down in the Old Testament. Uh, listen, uh, under the Old Testament economy, uh, 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 you had to keep the law. Uh, but we found out they couldn't do that. Uh, 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 under the New Testament economy, we realized Jesus kept the law and we believe on the Lord and get saved. Uh, but do you realize that without the law, Old Testament economy, without the law, we'd have never been able to understand uh, we needed to be saved. Uh, do you realize under the Old Testament economy uh, uh, the people of God was Israel God's chosen people uh, you and I that are Gentiles had no right to God uh, but under the New Testament economy uh, God took the vine of Israel uh, and he grafted in a branch the church uh, and made a way that old Gentiles could be saved uh, so you've got to understand the Old Testament before you come to a clear understanding of the New Testament hmm? and there are some things that are still ringing true in the Old Testament hmm but you've got to understand that. And you understand that by the Word of God and by studying the Word of God. Huh? Listen, I've been studying it 50 years, and every time I get in it, I realize how ignorant I still am, how much more i got to learn, how much more God amazes me in the wonderful truths. I don't know how many times I've read this passage, but I've never seen were it not. I was reading it yesterday. Huh? Can I say, were it not for Christ, we'd be lost. If it were not for the canon of Scripture, we would be ignorant. By the way, being ignorant, I'm not throwing off. Being ignorant just means you haven't been taught. Hmm? And in this day and age, there's no excuse for people to be ignorant. If you do not have a learning deficiency, you should not be ignorant. There's more education available to more people than ever before. And the same goes with the Bible. Hmm? And I say this, were it not for Christ, we'd be lost. Were it not for the canon of Scripture, we'd be ignorant. If it were not for Christian fellowship, we would be lonely. The Bible says that it's a blessing to be accepted in the beloved. Do you know why Jesus gave us the church? He loved the church. He died for the church. Do you know why he gave us one another? Because he knew we'd need one another. If you're not careful, the devil gets you on an island and make you think you're the only one living for God. Elijah had that problem. The Lord revealed unto him he had 7,000 hadn't bowed the knee to Baal. But the Lord gave us one another because we need Christian fellowship. We need to be amongst our kind. The world tells us that uh, we're not playing with full deck because we're dependent on a God out there that nobody's ever seen or heard. The world says that we're, we're deficient and that we have to be able to depend on God because we can't uh, uh, have the mental faculties to trust and succeed in this world. Hogwash. Uh, and we may be nuts, but we're screwed on the right bolt. Are you listening? The world's against us. The flesh doesn't like the things of God, and certainly the devil's against us. And the Lord knew we'd need Christian fellowship so it wouldn't be lonely. Uh, my best friends in the world are here in the church. Hmm? Can I say my family's here in the church? Oh, I have a natural family. But I spend more time with you than I do them. Uh, what a blessing to be a part of the local church. And God knew that we needed one another. We are fitly framed together. And aren't you glad how God does things? Were it not for Christian fellowship, we'd be lonely. Were it not for the church, we'd have no authority. Thankful for the church. And can I say the Lord does everything through and by His local church. Now, I get in trouble when I make statements like I'm about ready to make, but that's okay. I kind of stay in trouble. It's all right. Hmm? But anything that bypasses the local church is wrong. I don't care how good of an intent they have. 
Can I say some of these singing groups that run up and down the road and all they do is pop into church from here to there, pop into concert halls from here to there so they can sing and sell their albums. God's not in that mess. If they're not working in and through their local church, God's not in that. I don't care how much talent they have. I don't care how much ability they have. I don't care how much they talk about God. If they're not a part of a local visible body of New Testament believers, they're not of God. Hmm? Can I say all these tent crusades that have run up and down the road for years, uh, 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 but they're not associated with a local church. Uh, listen, they're not of God. God uses tent meetings. Brother J.D. Walker's had a tent meeting. His tent meeting's always been out of a local church. God uses that. But there's a lot of crowds out there. They're not part of church. They're part of the ministry of themselves. Amen. Let me help you something. God's not impressed with us. But he loved the church and gave himself for it. The authority we have is in the local church. Mm -mm. I know I hit a nerve. Let me hit another one. There's one, out, there's one fellow out of Texas. I heard him say it. He said he wasn't called to preach. He volunteered. Well, I don't need to hear anything else you've got to say. Uh, but then he went on to say that uh, the authority's not with the church. It's with the man. The man can go out and start any church he wants to. Well, he can, but it won't have God's blessing on it because it's not of God. Hmm? Uh, it takes a church to birth a church. Just like it took my daughter-in-law to birth my grandbaby. It takes a mama to birth a baby. It takes a church to birth a church. Uh, some of these places, somebody said, well, I think we just started a church right here. They get mad at uh, the church you're going to or mad at the preacher, and they go down and say, well, we'll start our own church. Uh, God's not in that. There's no authority. Hmm? Can I say without the church, we'd have no authority? Hmm? By the way, I, I, when we baptize people, we don't baptize them in the name of the preacher. We baptize them under the authority of the local church. When we offer the Lord's table, we don't offer it uh, in the name of an individual. We offer the Lord's table in keeping the ordinance of the local church. That's why uh, when we offer the table, we offer it to our members because membership has its privileges. I cannot be held accountable for somebody that's not a member sitting underneath me. It's very simple. But yet people get all, get their panties on the wad, get their bowels in uproar because they've never been taught doctrine. Mm. Thank God for the authority of the local church. When we support missionaries, we support missionaries sent out of a local church. Everything we do is through and by the local church. We're starting a Bible college. It's going to be a local church ministry. Christ for the Caribbean is a local church ministry. Everything we do is associated with the church. If it's not part of the local church, I'm not for it and won't have a part of it. Hmm? Because again, the Lord's government on earth is His church. And I bless the Lord. Well, that went over by red blue, but I really don't care. It's truth. Whether or not people like it, sometimes the truth hurts. I know you all know that because I teach and preach on it. But can I say, were it not for the church, we'd have no authority. Were it not for Christian fellowship, we'd be lonely. If it wasn't for the canon of Scripture, we'd be ignorant. If it wasn't for Christ, we'd be lost. Let me say this lastly. Were it not for a cause, we would be apathetic. We preach on that burden this morning. If we don't have a burden, we become complacent and apathetic. I love our church. I love all that we have going on in the church. I love that we have a youth ministry. I love we have a jail ministry. I love we have a homeless ministry. I love we have a shut-in ministry. I love we have Christ for the Caribbean. I love we're starting a Bible college. I love, it scares me to death, we may start a school. I love anything that is through our church that honors the Lord Jesus Christ and points people to Him. I've often said this, you know, we got a visitation ministry. We got so many ministries. I'm for it all. I just can't do it all. And the reason we have those ministries is people have a burden to be a part of those ministries. And when somebody's got a burden and they come to me and say, Preacher, I, I, I would like to be a part of this or I want to do this, you know what I do? I throw gasoline on the fire. Yeah, you want to do it? Let's do it. 
Again, I'm for it. I just can't do it all. But blessed be the name of the Lord that we're not apathetic, that we're looking to do something. It's a well-known thing that in the average church, 90% of the work gets done by 10% of the people. I'm thrilled that that's not our church. We got so many people involved in so many things, and next month or here in just a few weeks, uh, first week of March when Brother Neil comes, and he's going to teach on the Great Commission every night. You're going to see how you can get involved in the Great Commission, and you don't have to do things that you maybe have made up your mind what the Great Commission's all about. Everybody can have a part in it, and that's a blessing. Can I say I'm glad so many people are wanting to do something. It keeps us from getting apathetic. huh? Anybody ever heard this statement, if you don't use it, you lose it? You keep your knees from bending for about three months, they'll get stiff. You can't bend them. Huh? We get around, sit around and do nothing, guess what happens? We get stiff. If the salt has lost its savor, it's thenceforth good for nothing. It will be cast out and trodden under the men. What a blessing. We got folks that want to do things, want to honor the Lord, want to be a part of things. And I bless the Lord for it. Do you know every time I go preach a meeting, I'm not going out there as Doug Foster ministry. By the way, you want one sure way that Doug Foster is not going to support you if you're a missionary? Tell me you've got such and such your name ministries because it's not of the local church. But if I am invited somewhere to preach, you know I'm going as an ambassador of our church. And you realize when anybody gets help or when anybody gets saved, the Lord is giving our church credit for that. Do you realize every one of them missionaries back there on that board we support, every time they win somebody to God, we get credit for that because we help send them there? Do you realize every time you give out a gospel track or every time that you do something for the honor and glory of God and it impacts somebody, you're getting credit for that? The church is getting credit for that? But isn't it exciting to be a part of the church? Huh? Huh? Listen. Miss Nett and I watched a movie last night. It brought back too many memories. I watched a movie about a preacher's boy who went on to be a major league baseball player. But man, a little country church that the preacher preached, man, it took me back. Lord, it took me back. Huh? But unlike what we saw, I mean, there were people in this place, they was actually smoking in the church. Preacher got kicked out because he preached. All, he told him, he said, y'all got to quit spitting your tobacco juice on the floor. Quit smoking. You ought to reverence the house of God. Uh, uh, they, they told him to pack his bags. Huh? They did. Well, my grandpa got told to pack his bags too, but he didn't. It wasn't over folks smoking. But anyway, can you imagine? But this boy, he was crippled up. And uh, his daddy told him he'd never be a baseball player. But that was that boy's desire. And he went on to hit a baseball better than anybody in that part of Texas and went on to make the major leagues. But that brought back a lot of memories. I got to thinking about the way things could have been. But I'm sure glad God knows best. And I wouldn't trade my life for anything this world has to offer. And them little kids come up, and they want to shake my hand and say something to Brother Doug. That makes my day. Uh, Miss Brittany said they got down there to camp, and some kids were coming up to our kids and saying, Oh, you go to Brother Foster's church. That may not do nothing for you, but that does something for me. That I was going on a path that could have wrecked my life, but God intervened. Uh what a blessing to see God just doing things, God moving in areas. Huh? What a blessing to be a part of a place. We're just a little place here on the side of a hill. We're not even on the main road anymore. But neighbor, wait till we get to heaven and you see all that was done for Christ through our church. What a blessing. I'm glad we got a cause. Say, what is our cause? Our cause is to honor Jesus and to try and win sinners. Huh? 
Is there not a cause? Isn't there something worth fighting for? These young people are worth fighting for. Are they not? Huh? Our church is worth fighting for. Is it not? Huh? The things of God are worth fighting for. Are they not? I bless the Lord. The man of God said, Were it not that I had regard for Jehoshaphat, I wouldn't even see you. Huh? Aren't you glad things shouldn't have turned out good for us? But were it not for the things of God, we'd be in a mess tonight. We ought to bless the Lord that the Lord stepped in right on time. Hmm? I don't know where you are, but I know where you would be without Christ. Just think about some of these folks in this church that are your best friends in the world. Were it not for them, you'd be lonely. Were it not for the Bible, can you imagine? You'd be carried about with every wind of doctrine, just like Paul said. Were it not for the goodness of God, we'd be in a mess. You know what? We need to thank the Lord that on the reputation of another, Elisha inquired of the Lord. And can I say, because of Christ, God has forgiven us. God has been long-suffering with us. God has been patient with us. God has been good to us all because of how much he regards Christ. Were it not. I was thinking this afternoon, we preached about them fellows bearing that ark this morning. You know, nobody knows their names. They didn't bear the ark to be seen. They had the privilege of bearing that ark and they carried it five miles to Jerusalem. Nobody saw them or remembered them, but all Jerusalem was blessed because of them. Uh, you read on, they're going to win a great battle here. And the battle was the Lord's. The Lord wrought the victory. But if it wouldn't have been for Jehoshaphat, Israel would have never got the peace that God was going to be with them. I said all that to say this, you be a were it not. You be the one standing between somebody and hell. You be the one that gets them to Christ. You be the one that prays over their soul. You be the one that has the good reputation. You be the one uh, that is constantly seeking the Lord on behalf of others. You never know. You might be the very one that makes the difference. Uh, get them to Jesus. You could be that one. Be that one. Don't be the other one. Amen. God help us. And we ought to be thankful tonight for were it not. And we ought to strive to be were it not for somebody else. Tonight, God spoke to your heart. Y'all do business with the Lord. Maybe you need to come thank Him. Maybe you need to come tell Him you love Him. Maybe you need to bless His name that He put somebody in your life or He put a circumstance in your life that turns you to Him. Y'all be thankful for your Bible, your church, for your fellow saints. Y'all be thankful for those things. If you're not grateful, God may take them away. Amen. So let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come get your guitar, get an invitation song ready. Folks already coming. God spoke to your heart. You come while they're getting that ready. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. We're thankful for Jesus' sake. We have reaped many benefits and blessings. Lord, we'd be lost without you. Lord, we'd be in a mess without you. And God, we're so grateful for your goodness and your kindness towards us. God, we're thankful for the scriptures. We're thankful for the house of God and the people of God. We're thankful we have a burden and a cause to do something for God. But God, help us to not rest on all that. Help us to continually, having done all to stand, stand therefore, and help us to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. God, maybe somebody needs to come tonight and show their appreciation to you. Maybe somebody needs to come tonight and tell you once again they love you. Maybe somebody needs to come tonight and Lord just ask you to help them to be what they can be for you so they can be a were it not. Maybe somebody tonight needs to go somebody that was that person that stood for them and that impacted their life. And they just need to go and thank them for being a blessing. Lord, I don't know what the need is, but I know that the Holy Ghost does. 
So God, have your way in this invitation. Bless as only you can. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.